<laughs> you deserve it. You deserve someone who would love you as a switch. <laughs> My name is Anastasia and I'm a switch. The term switch usually refers to a person who in BDSM practices uh, likes both to be submissive and to be dominant and uh, switches between the two. I think the best advice I could give it is probably to accept uh, your switch in nature because it makes it considerably easier to relax either into top space or into subspace. Um, and to just understand that your desire to be submissive doesn't make you less of a dom or your desire to be dominant doesn't make you less of a submissive and both are completely valid. I think also it's quite useful to have something which would remind you of um, your top space or your subspace. For me, for example, it could be certain sounds, music, certain textures or certain objects. For me, for example, latex is a very top space thing, which really helps me to get into the headspace, or things like bondage or colors are very subspace things, so something which just helps you to get into that. I think sometimes when you're a switch, your different sides come, come out with different people, depending on what kind of energy they have and what kind of styles of play they have. So I think if you try and to do both things with the same partner, it would probably the best would be to have just an honest conversation with them and talk about them, how would you like to switch and what would you like to explore. Uh, or otherwise, you can just dis try to explore these things with different people. I've had submissive fantasies since I was very, very young, so I always knew I had that in me. But then I think that I understood that I was a switch 100% when I got tied up properly for the first time and I was really enjoying the experience, completely spaced out. And yet I couldn't stop thinking how much I would love to learn this and do it to other people. So I think for me dominance is something which started as just something I really wanted the people to enjoy, I really wanted to give it to other people and give them that great experience. And then gradually it became something which is more about being in control or being sadistic or doing really filthy, creatively filthy, fun things to people. Um, so I think also, I think that um, a lot of people who were socialized, raised as women could probably relate that we're not really encouraged to explore our dominant side at all. So it's something which is hard to understand or realize or recognize in yourself when you have these ideas. So sometimes when I think back to certain fantasies or certain things I wanted to do, I'm like, oh yeah, that was it. <laughs> That's what it was. So yeah, I think a lot of people have switchiness in themselves and I think a lot of people would like to switch or a lot of people think about switching. But I guess not so many people are open about it because there's still quite a bit of judgment in the community and generally just about trying things which are new or trying things which are seemingly out of character or trying things which are maybe you're not supposed to want and you're not supposed to like. But to be honest, that's kind of what BDSM and King are all about, is about trying these things which are a bit taboo or which the like, status quo or in accordance to status quo you're not supposed to be liking or enjoying, so that's what I really like about being a Swede. I think the desire to find a person with whom you would want to explore both sides of your switchiness is really something which should be coming from you because not everyone wants that. For example, I prefer exploring and expressing my different sides with different people and I actually really rarely switch to the same person. So I would say it's not easy in the same way it's not easy finding a person who would be perfectly suitable for you in 
the things you like and then the style you like the style you like to play and the things you want to explore but the best thing i guess is having good communication and being open about your desires and being unapologetic about your desires and just um, knowing that there's certainly going to be someone who would like this both sides of you and would accept this both sides of you because to be honest yeah everyone deserves that I know that there are people who really like switching in the same scene. I'm definitely not one of these people um, because I like being dominant and being submissive mostly for the headspace and for the unique experience you get in this headspace for a long time and that being a prolonged process. Um, but there are definitely people who like switching in a more fast-paced, chaotic way which I'm kind of almost jealous of. Um, I think uh, there are things which lend itself to switching us almost in a natural way. Like there are things like wrestling, where you're fighting for who's gonna top. Or you can try something which is considerably more scripted, like doing an abduction scene which goes wrong for someone in there. Um, or just basically being creative together and trying to think in which way can you create a scene together which would be enjoyable for everyone in a switchy way and the main thing I guess is yeah to be creative but also to have really good communication about what would you like to get out of this experience and what kind of boundaries both people have about giving and receiving and switching and how could it be done basically so everybody has fun but also everybody's boundaries and desires are respected. I think the obvious answer of course if you are polyamorous or non-monogamous or you're single or you play with different people it's definitely much easier to explore your switch aside because you can just explore it with different people and in different type of um, play spaces but if you have only one partner I guess it comes down again to communication and being honest about what you want and I think what is important is understanding that a partner who you trust and, or a play partner who you trust should never really diminish your desire to switch because I think everyone deserves being understood around the different desires and different sides of them so um, yeah for me it's just a major red flag really if somebody finds out about your other side and then it somehow changes your their opinion about you because I think what it means it's probably what they have is just a projection of you which is more like a fantasy rather than your real self or sometimes maybe they just like a dom with not a lot of confidence. <laughs> I can suggest a few things which are not to do with a switch. The first one, never assume someone's preferred role or preferred style of play based on the gender or based on how, what they look like. Because you can have the sweetest, femme, cute person who will then be the most hardcore sadist or you can be a very masculine, very assertive person who would be like the cutest, softest bottom and there's just no way of trying to judge someone's so-called real self based on how they present themselves. So that's very important to remember. I think if you played with a switch or seen a switch, also don't assume that they would want to switch with you all the time or if they'd want to switch with you ever because I think they could be perfectly happy just uh, in the dynamic that you have and it might be what they need or want and don't switch on someone without telling them about it beforehand and without asking if they would like that because I think both dominance and submission they're really like a gift which you give to someone and it's not something you should be taking from someone just like that because you assume that they like that so I mean yeah the main thing is really just don't assume anything 
because switches are pretty chaotic people or we just contain a lot of different things within us so just ask us to tell you how we like it it's like it's any there's a risk in crossing the road like <laughs> there's a risk in anything but <laughs> I think I'm a, I'm I'm like a top leaning switch, so I I'm more of a top or more of a dominant partner usually. But I wouldn't say I prefer that. I maybe prefer it at the minute, but I think what I really like about being a switch is that it teaches you that sexuality is something really fluid. So it's something which depends on which place you're at in your life. It depends on many factors, it depends on people you meet, so sexuality is not really something which stays the same throughout all your life, it's something which changes with you. So, yeah, and I wouldn't say that, um, I wouldn't say that I kind of graduated from being submissive into being more of a dom, and I think I will always have that vulnerability and I will always have that openness and trust which I developed while being submissive to other people and I actually learned I think most of my tricks from being sub or bottom so I think yeah the best way to be a switch for me is to really just value the both sides of yourself always. I really like the idea of trying to rethink what we actually mean by sex when we talk about sex because in the mainstream culture sex is often something which we say when we mean just penetrative sex or something we've seen in pornography but I think even though these things are also great uh, I think anything could be approached with creative erotic energy and a lot of experiences could be sexual in a more nuanced and creative ways and I think it's about finding pleasure in things around you and it's about just yeah loving this erotic energy in other people and in yourself and making it something which helps you just more live just a more fulfilling creative life and yeah I mean also being like a pervert or a sexual deviant or whatever society calls us is just very inspiring and I think it's, it just enriches how you move through the world and I really love that. <laughs>